Hi, everybody, and good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope your Tuesday is going well, and I can tell you it's going to get even better <laughs> when you uh, attend this webinar because we have some really exciting information for you. My name is Sandy Elson, and this webinar is being brought to you by the Travel Professional Community and HomeBasedTravelAgent.com, and especially by our host for today, Emerald Waterways. Our speaker for Emerald Waterways is Randy Goodrich. Randy's topic today is Emerald Waterways, what's new for 2017? Randy does travel agent training for both sister cruise lines, Emerald Waterways and Scenic Cruises, and is also a business development manager in many states for both cruises. As always, we really appreciate the support we get from Emerald and from Scenic. Before we get started, please remember that you are all muted, but we welcome your questions. You can type in your questions at any time in the question area you see on the right-hand panel of your screen. At the end of Randy's presentation, we'll get to as many questions as we can. So let's get right to all of this exciting information about Emerald Waterways in 2017. Welcome, Randy. Thank you, Sandy. Appreciate it. Appreciate everybody participating, taking a little time out of your nice August, I hope, wherever you are. And summer, the summer is going well for you. Business is not down too much. So you'd be up and down these days quite a bit, but we're going to try to tell you something about Emerald today and why uh, you want to offer Emerald to uh, your clients really looking for the best value in river cruising. And I'll give you a little background on the company first and then we'll go into uh, some general information about the cruise line and then what's new for 17 uh, and hopefully uh, help you in your process of selling. So first of all, Emerald Waterways is part of the Scenic family, Scenic Luxury Cruises and Tours. Um, and actually, Scenic's been around for 30 years. Uh, we were uh, start, We started in 1986 in Australia. Uh, started by a, a gentleman by the name of Glenn Maroney, uh, fresh out of college, and started helping his uh, dad, who uh, with some of his friends owned a hotel in the outback of Australia, uh, and wanted uh, Glenn to figure out how to get people to come and fill up that hotel. So he started running tours out there, and eventually that grew into more tours, more tours, and today he's one of the largest uh, luxury tour operators in the world, uh, one of the largest provider of uh, clients to Fairmont Hotels, to Alaska Cruises for, for both Princess and Holland America, one of the largest provider of cabins outside the United States. So he's a very substantial company, which is good to know. He started uh, the Scenic uh, Luxury River Cruise Company in, in 2008. Uh, it was some very innovative features and whatnot, and in 2014, we uh, started Emerald Waterways so that you could have Scenic as a five-star luxury, the most all-inclusive, and Emerald with uh, more competitive pricing, beautiful new ships, the special features we'll go through, um, and we also got the award last year for the best uh, value in river cruising by Cruise Critic in the first year we had the best new river ship award as well. So it's a deluxe four star plus experience. We call the ship starships uh, just because they have some special features. Again, we'll show you that. In fact, the picture of the ship here is uh, it's a good one because you can see the entire ship. Uh, we're in the front and the top is the, the lounge area, the main bar, a large lounge, and then uh, in the front there, there's a dining area, and down below, that's the restaurant. And in the back of the ship, like most of the ships on the Grind Mine Danube, <laughs> you're going to find the cabins. And then in the very back, that funny looking structure is where the swimming pool is and cinema. So we'll show you a little bit more about that later. So we currently have four ships uh, on the Rhine Mine and Danube. They've been doing a charter as well on the Rhone and also in the Mekong. Uh, 17, you will see a new ship for the Rhone, will be our own, the Liberté. We also are, will be building the Radiance for the Douro River in Portugal, and the Destiny will be another one of the larger ships on the Rhine Mine Danube. The ships uh, on the Rhine Mine Danube are 182 passengers, so uh, a little more than Scenic and some of the others, less so than uh, some of your. Uh, mainframe, let's call it, uh, river cruise companies that can have as many as 200 passengers on the same size ship. So it's important always to look at the number of passengers that relates to how large the rooms are 
uh, and to some people that really makes a big difference. So keep that in mind. So here's a little bit of a breakdown. Uh, you've got the smaller, less expensive rooms, 180 square feet down at, on the first deck. Um, and those just have kind of a, a larger window that goes across the top because you're pretty close to water level. On the second deck, you've got the restaurant in the front, and you've got uh, other cabins in the back. Third deck, you've got the lounge, and then the bigger cabins, some of the suites that we have. We'll show you those in a minute, and you can see the pool back there in the back. So that's the setup of it. As far as why it's an exceptional value, we include all airport transfers, whether you buy air from us or not. We really don't care if you buy the air from us. Uh, we have some air deals and specials, but if they want to use miles or whatever, we just want to know when they arrive so that we can pick them up and also then take them back to the airport at the end of the trip. All meals, of course, on board. We have two dining choices there. Uh, complimentary wine, beer, and soft drinks. Uh, with lunch and dinner, and it's not just a red wine or a white wine, it's a selection. That's very a small thing, but very important to some people that there's a nice selection of different types of wines and beers, things like that. Uh, and then we have tea and coffee, lots of tea. We're Australian, we have a lot of uh, people from the United Kingdom and other areas that really do drink a lot of tea, so tea drinkers, plenty of that on board. Of course, bottle of water in the refrigerator in each cabin. We also include a shore excursion uh, pretty much every day we're on uh, the rivers. And the only time we wouldn't is maybe a day of embarkation or disembarkation. But we also include an extra what we call Emerald Plus. So this is without any additional charge. Uh, there will be one or two of these each week that will be added. Those are spelled out in the brochures uh, when you look the different itineraries. Of course, we use local guides. These are a lot of times the same guides we use at Scenic, and we're prepaying all the tips, so we have a tendency to get very knowledgeable, good local guides. Wi Fi courses included throughout the ship, port charges are included. We do have bicycles on board, but not the e bikes like Scenic has, but they're very nice bicycles on board for people to use. Uh, in, it's all English speaking, and as I mentioned, we include we take care of all the tips, gratuities, both on the ship and on any of the shore excursions and things that we do on shore. There's a nice chart here. Uh, I'm not sure if Sandy can uh, put that up so you can download that if you haven't seen this. It's uh, rivercruiseadvisor.com, very good site for you to get some unbiased uh, reviews on the different ships out there, different services. You can see that this one, uh, uh, down, at the, down at the Scenic Calc and Uniworld are going to be the more inclusive uh, five-star uh, ships and services. So you see, and Scenic got the most check marks, but right above that you have Emerald with six check marks uh, compared to, say, Viking with two and uh, Avalon Ama with three. Uh, what that means really is that those are things that are included. That means that your client is getting more for the the money, and it's very important to use this comparison chart. Uh, it may be that, uh, say, Viking is the best thing for them, but they need to know that there's certain things that aren't included that are going to cost some money. Uh, so they'll have a bigger bill when they check out. As far as the ships themselves, they're very new looking. Uh, if, uh, they've only been in service, this is their third year for, for our old ones, and then we'll have, like I said, three new ones next year. But they're beautiful, lots of glass, lots of chrome, lots of mirrors, they're very, meant to be very light. Uh, I kind of think when I look at them, very the hotel is kind of like W Hotel, uh, very, very kind of trendy, new uh, design, things like that. That's the main reception area there. Here's the Horizon Bar and Lounge, so lots of sitting areas meant for people to uh, congregate and get to know each other. One of the beauties of both Emerald and Scenic is uh, the diverse nationalities uh, that are on board. Um, the other U.S. river cruise companies uh, are mostly Americans and some Can Canadians too. Not a whole lot of people from other parts of the world. In our case, it's probably a uh, just generally speaking, a third of the, of the clientele is going to be from Australia and New Zealand. A third is going to be from the United Kingdom and other countries throughout Europe, and a third is now. Uh, from North America. 
So they can very easily be sitting down, uh, talking to, chatting to somebody who lives halfway across the world and talk about their lifestyles and things that are important to them, etc. Uh, something that Americans in general don't have a lot of opportunity to do. And when we're overseas, quite often uh, not everybody speaks English, but on board, everything's in English. So that's a side perk. Reflections restaurants, beautiful. It's, as I mentioned, it's down below, but very light and airy. Um, it's a buffet style. You see here, all the guests can sit in one uh, seating, uh, but it is a buffet for breakfast and lunch. There are some items that you can order as well, but like breakfast is everything you think of. Behind the waiter there, you can kind of see the buffets in the middle. Uh, it's amazing how much stuff they produce there, different kinds of food. Some local, some normal, people are used to. Four course dinners, these are all uh, off the menu. Uh, very, very nice. Again, wine, a selection of wine, a selection of whites, a selection of reds, uh, uh, rosés, whatever people would like, and beers at lunch and dinner, of course. Example of a menu, so you have four different courses there. There's typically some type of uh, meat, some type of fish, and then some type of vegetarian food. If your clients do have any special dietary needs, we just need to know that there's a form that you can complete so that the ship is aware of that fact uh, ahead of time. And then you've got the terrace area. This is in the front of our lounge. Uh, this is a lovely area to sit for a light breakfast, light lunch type of deal. Uh, and you can uh, sit outside if the weather's nice like that, or you can sit at this uh, kind of bar area which looks straight out over the bow of the ship. So you can be looking around to see where we are in that particular time, cruising along the river. Then there is a wellness spa, uh, wellness area uh, and down below on the first deck. So you've got massage there, you've got hair styling there, you've got the exercise area those people who want to get a little more exercise, although they're pretty busy every day walking about. Here's the cabin. So this is the this is the lowest category. This is category E. E like Edward. E and D are here. The only difference between those is the one's a little closer to the stairwell, so <laughs> they charge a little bit more for that, whatever. Um, and then there are two ES, uh, which would be your single cabins. So this is the double right here we're looking at. A single would be narrower. And so they they put a single bed uh, lengthwise uh, in that cabin. So it's pretty small, but it works for a single, and it's a, a great price point for them. So these these have all the amenities of the other cabins. It's just uh, they don't have the big uh, uh, they don't have the balcony or the big window because uh, the water is about where that railing goes across the middle of the wall. There, so it's kind of tough. The bathrooms are all very well pointed. Uh, great lotions and everything else. Water brushes, terrific. Uh, air dryers, bathrooms, all that kind of stuff. This is the primary uh, type of cabin. This would be what we call panoramic balcony. This is an inside balcony versus an outside balcony, and I'll show you the difference. But basically, there's that thing that looks like a balcony there. There's the double uh, panel window. We, we call that the open air balcony. We have those on this, all of our ships, Steam Can Emerald. That's where uh, there's two glass panels there with the push of a button. You can raise and lower one, just like raising and lowering uh, you know, a lot of the windows we have in our houses. If you have that, still have that kind of window, you just kind of raise and lower. Uh, same, same effect here. It's like this very large panoramic window, and you simply push a button and it raises or lowers. A lot of people leave it partially open at night. So these are 180 square feet. And uh, even though it kind of looks like a balcony, it's really inside. There's not a door out the, going out to the balcony. That's the primary difference. Uh, and you're not technically really outside. You just have this uh, ability to open half that window totally up to the, uh, uh, to the outside. So here's a balcony cabin. You can see the separate door to go out to the balcony. Uh, it's very lovely. These are 210 square feet. There's eight of these grand balcony suites on board. These are the ships on the Rhine Main Danube primarily. Uh, they have a coffee machine there. They have concierge service that comes with it. Lovely rooms. 
And then the biggest suites on board, uh, Emerald, are 315 square for these owners one bedroom suite so you can see it's a separate bedroom uh, area there's a walk-in closet uh, you get room service with this a mini bar so there's some uh, liquor included complimentary laundry robe slippers it's an iPad in here so it's kind of like a bigger picture there you go so really really nice uh, as you go into the bedroom go to the left that's where the, the uh, walk-in closet and the bathroom is and these doors out to the balcony, uh, they fold back. Uh, you're going to see it in the far right there. Uh, it's going to be in a sliding glass door. They're actually a fold, so it opens the entire entrance up, which is really nice. When I'm on board, I don't even close that. I just close the outer window. And if I need privacy, I'll close the drapes. Spectacular. Nice view of Dernstein and Oaxaca Valley there in the background. So another picture of the ship, just so you can get an idea of the pool, not primarily. Uh, in the back there, you can see it's got an open uh, ceiling, so that's retractable roof, basically. All glass all the way around. It's just an absolutely lovely, very peaceful, kind of a spa type room. Uh, really nice. So here's a picture of it from the inside looking out. Uh, and then right behind where the person's taking the picture, there's a little bar area that's got 24-hour coffee service as well as bar service during, during the day and evening. Now, uh, this is a very unique uh, engineering feat that they have uh, done here. And there is a video I can't show here, but you can see it online. I'll show you later uh, where to get those videos because it's important, I think, for you to show your client. So what happens in the afternoon when people start to get ready for dinner, they close this area up, they, they close the roof, they close the windows, uh, put uh, coverings on the windows, and then they push a button and it takes oh, 10, 15 minutes and the bottom of the pool actually rises to the top. So you can see it kind of looks like decking material in the bottom of the pool and, and in fact it is. There it is there. So those chairs are actually sitting on what was the bottom of the pool the water has gone down underneath, uh, and then uh, several nights a week we turn it into a cinema with uh, first-run movies, uh, uh, or some places like if, in, if we're coming into where we might go to Salzburg, we'll show the sound of music so people can get in the spirit, sing the songs as they walk through Salzburg, uh, that type of thing. Other nights we'll have a pub night in here, we'll have some parties. If you happen to have a group, this is a great room that can be reserved, uh, you know, sizable group. So it's a very, very interesting, very innovative uh, multi-purpose uh, area. So again, about the value, uh, just to, to reinforce that, the extra short excursions called Emerald Plus uh, are very important when you're talking to a client. We do have extra short excursion called Discover More. Those are at a cost. The Emerald Plus is not. The Emerald Plus is included free of charge. Uh, great selection of wines and beers, like I mentioned, all transfers included. A couple of things on Emerald Plus, just to give you an idea, a guided tour of the Melk Abbey. You see the picture to the right. It's absolutely phenomenal. I've been there four times, and I see something new each time I go there. and can't wait to go again. Uh, it might have entertainment, local entertainment. Uh, that's included. That some others would charge money for glass blowing, for example, hosted uh, afternoon tea, sometimes even a dinner with uh, a family, a local family, uh, lectures, of course. The good old Hungarian dinner and dancing. That's uh, the theme plot stuff going really well. Lunch and cake baking, the family uh, run cost off, castle tours, things like that. So it's really nice. Now, this year we're in 17. We're actually adding quite a few more very active. We have we have the not so active uh, tours and whatnot. But you know, and people, some people want to walk fast, some people don't. So we try to break that up for them. And then uh, you have your excursions. We're going to hiking excursions. We're going to biking excursions and different depends on the itinerary. But those will be spelled out. We call that Emerald Active. Uh, Clients should love some of that. That like those who like to do a little uh, bike riding or hiking, uh, kind of organized. There's the bikes on board. Uh, very nice bikes. Uh, if, if the bikes provide a, a 
an, another opportunity for people to experience the destination kind of on their own. Some We have some guided trips, but you can also take off on your own and really get kind of back in uh, places that typically the tourists don't take it. River cruises are great for groups. Uh, personally, I've been on uh, many river cruises, most almost always with a group of people. Uh, could be four, six, eight different couples. It's a great uh, experience because there are so many things are included that uh, people aren't, you know, so much trying to figure out where they're going to eat, where they're, what they're going to do each day, all that. That's all pretty much figured out. They just uh, have a good time and uh, share their memories uh, with each other. Uh, we have some group. Great group programs. So we're running uh, uh, some itineraries next year where it only takes uh, instead of five uh, five cabins to form a group, there'd be four. So make sure you ask your salesperson if you have a chance. The other thing is that quite often I have found that uh, you'll get a call and somebody wanted to take a river cruise and maybe two couples. Uh, I just encourage you to encourage them to talk to some of their other friends uh, and share share perhaps the confirmation you send to them and uh, you'd be surprised how many times they may find another two or three couples that want to go along with them because river cruising is so popular. So these are our, our itineraries here, they're pretty typical, we all obviously all go on the same river, the river goes to the same places, but uh, the most popular uh, one week trip would be your Danube Delights between Nuremberg and Budapest, the most popular two week is the Splendors of Europe, which is between Amsterdam and Budapest, you go to five countries, three rivers, through the different canals. A system that was only made available uh, just not that long ago for people to make that, that uh, trip all the way across Europe. And then you can add to the Danube Delights uh, a three night stay in Prague, which is highly recommended. Prague, as you well know, is not on the river. Uh, on the Danube, so it's a couple of hours at least uh, to get there. Uh, so the, the pre-package or post-package includes transportation back and forth, as well as three nights in a very nice hotel in Prague and the city tour. Uh, Field of the Rhine is very, very popular on the Rhine River between Amsterdam and Basel, Switzerland. We've also got a different itinerary, eight days going to Passau to Budapest, typically fly into Nuremberg, I mean into uh, at Nuremberg, Munich. Um, and then there's the Netherlands and Beauty of Belgium. That's in the springtime when all the flowers are out in the Kukunov Gardens. It's a spectacular trip. Uh, Legends, Moselle, Rhine, and the Mine. So that's a uh, very unusual itinerary. You won't see too many places from Trier on the Moselle River uh, all the way to go across Europe to Nuremberg. So. You're actually not in the Rhine for too long, but you get to go through the castle area. <clears throat> Eastern Europe, that's the lower uh, Danube River, down to Bucharest, get down real close to the Black Sea. Then, of course, uh, there's, there's another unusual itinerary, 17 days, going from Bucharest all the way up to Nuremberg. So a pretty good chunk of all the Danube River, quite frankly, that, that you can navigate. Christmas markets are out there, very popular, and becoming more popular all the time. And then for next year, we're adding the ships, so the new ship in, on the Rhone, so we'll go from Leon to Arles, and also on the Duro River in Portugal would be our own ship. Uh, so any built their own ship last year. Most of the other ships out there are, in fact, uh, chartered uh, or leased. They're not owned by the, the line, so uh, they can't do anything special, but ours are kind of special. These two ships will be a little bit smaller uh, than our others. I'll show you a little bit more of that in a minute. And you can also combine a lot of these trips, and this has become very popular for people to have a little bit more time. So you can and start in Amsterdam, go down to Basel, go transfer them over to Arles uh, or to Lyon, and then they will go all the way down to Arles uh, in the southern Rhone River, close to Nice. Or you do the Portugal and the Rhone uh, together as well. So different combinations, and we take care of the transportation in, in between. So here's the new uh, sailing for, for the Rhone River. Uh, and you actually would come down from Paris typically if you're going from north to south. Uh, take the train and then a, a short bus transfer over to Chalon, which is on the Saone River. And then in Lyon, you get into the 
Rhone. And it's beautiful, lots of great uh, French as well as Roman history along the way, lots of good wine, people like wine. It's one called the Liberté. It's only 138 guests versus 182 for our bigger ships. Um, but spectacular. And there are two single uh, statement categories. So several extensions, pre post, Paris, or Nice. Encourage you to offer that. Get kind of a view of the ship itself. A little pool in the back, still on this one as well. Just the extensions. And then Portugal, uh, it's an eight day trip out of Porto, round trip, between Salamanca, a, a bus ride up to Salamanca, Spain, or heritage site. So this ship uh, is going to have 112 guests, so it's even smaller. There isn't really a pool pool. You're, you can see at the very top there, uh, it's more, we call that a vitality pool. It's uh, kind of like a big jacuzzi. Uh, but again, lovely ship made for that river with extensions in Madrid and Lisbon in this case. Some people do both. Here's your combination trip, so you can see where you can start in Amsterdam, go down the Rhine River, get to Basel, and then we'll motor coach over to Lyon, it's not that far, and get you on the ship uh, so you can do the Rhone. And then the other one is doing the Rhone or doing the Dural first and then fly your client over to Lyon. So they have a two week trip, nice variety there. A little Portuguese, a little French. Let's talk about some of the tools we have for you online so to help you sell. Um, we have a on our website, which is uh, emeraldwaterways.com, uh, you will see on the upper left that there's an agent portal link. You click on that, and that opens up to this view on the left side here. Expressbook is our booking engine. You need to get registered for that. There's a registration uh, link there for you to get registered. If you're with an agency that's already registered, you would use their username and password uh, to get in and then set up your own registration within that. So that would keep you all with the same uh, commissions and everything else. Uh, it's an excellent, excellent area. I believe I have some slides here in more detail on that. This is also where the scenic specialist I mean, the Emerald Waterway Specialist Program is. And before you book your next Emerald Waterways booking, I would encourage you to uh, take this test because you will get a bonus commission uh, if you book something within six months after taking the test. It also makes you more professional and knowledgeable about the product so you can explain the differences to your client. You also see here we have, uh, you can order brochures very quickly. I have them sent directly to your office. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there's that comparison chart, uh, is, there's a link to that, there's information groups, there's information on the BDMs, etc. Uh, bouncing over to uh, Vietnam and Cambodia, the Mekong, we do have a charter there that we run, just so you're aware of that. It's on the navigator. Oops, I'm bouncing around in my slides here a little bit, sorry about that. So bouncing over to southern France, um, that eight-day trip, there are a couple uh, interesting things. The Emerald Plus, you get an onboard cheese, knowledge tasting, and dinner prepared by one of the local chefs that comes on board, so that's quite nice. There are several em Emerald Active Tours as well, and there's some Discover More, which are optional at an additional cost. There's quite a bit to do. These trips are quite, uh, quite busy, and then the Radiance. We looked at that a little bit already. So. And there are a couple of extra uh, highlights included there that you won't find uh, with most of the other cruise lines. We do have some early booking offers for 2017. There is a special that's running right now that uh, expired, I believe it's September 2nd. You we'll see some of the uh, air discounts have been lowered. Uh, and we do it by, by date and which uh, particular part of the United States they're flying out of. Uh, we're, we're good for the pricing on that air offer. We also uh, have an extended drink package, which means they can have beer and wine anytime uh, of the day or night. Um, and that's 
that's included, there is a, there's a, another level that they can purchase a drink package where it's, if they want to have hard liquor, champagne, something like that, different. We're also throwing in 100 euros that they can spend on board, so um, that could include a, a lot of different drinks as well as some of the optional excursions. Um, and then we've reduced the deposit from $500 per person um, refundable to $250 per person. So that's nice. So we're encouraging people to book early. Uh, we are a global company. We tend to book and sell out our cruises pretty quickly. Um, and so that's uh, it's important that you have customers that get interested in this, that they do jump in and get the deposit. Our final payment is not due until 90 days prior to departure. Now, if they do take one of the airfare deals, if they don't, they'll get the air credit, of course. But if they want to take one of the airfare deals, then they will uh, have an additional deposit of $1,500 per person that will come off the final payment. But that will be due when we do the air, just to cover because we actually go out and buy the airline tickets. Uh, we don't do the contract fares like some of the others. And so they have a wider choice uh, selection of which airlines they might want to travel on and things like that. Uh, but we actually have to have an additional deposit at that time, just so you know. And then if it is a longer cruise, then your airs can be less. Uh, the credit on board credits is 200 euros that they will have to spend. So uh, you can do that. Groups, I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, you can get a group that's five cabins typically. Um, and looks like I need to update this slide a little bit. So we had a, we had a special in France, but we do run these specials where it's only seven uh, as we get closer to some of the departures in this open space. So uh, it's important to keep track of that. If you have a potential for a group, just call us up and we'll let you know where those might be. They change almost daily. You get discount when you book a group. Uh, we can arrange special meeting space, et cetera, especially in that cinema area. So this is the one that uh, I think this has been extended, but I, I need to double check that. But we'll have these specials. A lot of these specials are on our website. Uh, you'll see right here where it says offers. It's there. Also over to the right, you'll see videos. That's where a lot of the videos show you. Uh, Show you the ship in general, the services that are included, uh, videos on the swimming pool area and how that converts over, uh, different shore excursions, things like that. So there's quite a bit uh, on this website for you to use and also share with your client. You see the agent portal area up there in the upper left. That's where you click on to get into the agent portal. So here's the booking engine. This is more than a booking engine. This is also an area where you can instantly uh, get into availability. I know it's working as an agent uh, with a client that sort of knows what they want to do, and then you go back and forth. If you have to call the cruise line, uh, one quite often you're on hold, and then you get you do get a, a rate on a particular cabin. You call the client back; they're not sure if that's the right one. They want something else. You go back and forth a lot. If you have access to this this engine, you're in you're in immediately looking at availability. So all you have to do is uh, know the cruise code, which is in on the brochure. It's in where the pricing is. It's a little cold, a code like uh, NBU for Nuremberg, Budapest type thing. You put that in. You put the the first date that they may want to travel. It's going to default to three months. And then where there's a single or double, that's all you do. Then you're going to be looking at which sailings match that and which types of cabins are still available on that sailing. You select one of those that works best for your client, and there you're looking at the cabin. So the, the cabins here with the numbers in them are still available. So you can very quickly tell your client, uh, well, if you want uh, such and such category, we've got two of those uh, uh, right across from each other. They're traveling with another couple, so you can very quickly take care of that. And at that point, you can either uh, book it at that point, and then they have two days to 48 hours to make the make the deposit, or you can just create a quote that you can send to them, and they can then uh, let you know where that works, but they can share that quote with their friends. Uh, this is the area we put in any uh, uh, dietary, medical, mobility issues that the clients might have. 
this is an area you can't read. <laughs> I can't even read it here. Uh, but um, when it's live, it's obviously more readable. But these are the specials, so you can pick out which discounts apply to your client that they would like to take, like the fly free or discounted air, uh, things like that, onboard credits, those things. This is the quote uh, email that would go out to your client. So you've got a, an attachment here, which is actually going to be, so you, when you do the quote, you actually select the cabin. And uh, it's not going to take it out of the inventory. It's selecting it to get the pricing for that cabin. So that invoice is going to reflect that, plus any discounts, early booking discounts and stuff. So your client knows exactly what the cost is going to be. And then the, the blue um, link down here at the bottom is to the full itinerary. So they can share that with their friends or family. And then they call you back and say, we'd like to take that. And you simply open it up, go into Express Books. That's going to be listed as one of your quotes. We open it up and down at the bottom there, you get this button that says convert to booking. So you simply convert it. Again, our deposit policy is $500 per person, non-refundable deposit. If we do have some specials running right now, we half that. Final payment is 90 days prior to departure. And we do provide real documents, so you'll get in the mail, uh, either you have them sent to you and you can give them to your client or you can set it up to have them sent directly to the client. Nice packet with the confirmation information, more information about the cruise, baggage tags, but also uh, a day pack, a very nice little backpack uh, that they can take with them on the trip and use each day as they go out on their different uh, little adventures. This uh, is the final screen. This is the screen of all of our contacts uh, for uh, additional uh, service if you need from us. Uh, if you if you have me uh, joining us from Canada, you'll need to contact Canada and work directly with them. They have different specials, different uh, things that they do up there, so you need to keep that separate. Uh, so I'll keep this up, and Sandy, I'll take some questions now. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks, Randy. That was fantastic, as always. Um, we have several questions, and we'll get to as many as we can. I just want to remind our agents that if we don't get to your question, or if you think of something after the webinar, uh, please get in touch with your BDM. Randy has a list of them there, according to geographical area. Uh, or check Emerald Waterway's website. The address is there as well. Randy, one of our agents wants to know, what advice could you give to first-time river cruisers? Uh, what advice? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if somebody has been an ocean cruiser and the agent <laughs> is able to book them on a river cruise, is there anything special the agent should let them know about? The difference between yeah, I mean, when I when I run across people like that, um, you know, I'll ask them, "Have you been on a Have you been on an ocean cruise?" And of course, many have. Uh, and what did you like about it? And they they typically say, "Well, we, we like the convenience of only unpacking once, uh, having all the service, getting to know the people on board, that type of thing, and waking up eight every day in a different port." Um, but on an ocean cruise, it's a little bit more about the ship. Nowadays, all these spectacular ships are being built. Whereas, uh, I'll also ask them if they've ever been on a tour of any type, and, and what they liked. And typically, the answer there is that you know each day we're in this very interesting place. We get to spend all the time there. It's usually typically smaller groups of people. It's not like thousands coming off these big ships. Um, so I would say, well, what a river cruise is is the best boat. So the fact that you get to, you can fly to in this case fly to Europe. We'll pick you up at the airport, take your bags, um, you unpack once. Every day we're going to be in a different port, very similar to a tour now that we're going to be going and very, really focusing on these very interesting places along these historic rivers where a lot of the history of Europe was uh, started and formed, uh, both commerce and, and historical significance uh, to each one of those countries we visit. So like a tour, you're up close and personal, but unlike a tour, you're not in and out of different hotels every night and jumping on buses to get to the next spot. Uh, it's very relaxing, very comfortable, very simple. Uh, you can make it as active or inactive as you want. Uh, it's just really, uh, I think, the easiest way to travel and see a lot uh, in such ease. OK, great advice. Thank you. Um, one of our agents is asking, due to the small kitchen space, are most of the 
meals pre-prepared? No, they they uh, the, I mean the breakfast are right there. They're they're being prepared. Sometimes there's omelet stations and whatnot being prepared. Uh, so no, I don't I don't I've never had that question, but I don't know anything about any. They don't have room to store anything. Uh, the kitchen is a kitchen. They, they are small, and all the boats are typically in the bow. And you've got about two levels of uh, decks there that they work on. Uh, the people have to be very small working in there. I'll tell you that. But uh, they produce a tremendous amount of food. I agree. And just from my own personal experience, I've been on Emerald and uh, the food was definitely not pre-prepared. Everything was fresh. Everything was made for that particular meal. And uh, it's very impressive how they do it because of the small kitchen space. Chefs go in every day. Yeah. They they go into the, you know, every day we're in a different, you know, town or village or city. And they, uh, the chefs go in and uh, buy fresh produce and meats and whatever. Exactly. So yeah, they are they are quite fresh and prepared right on board the ship. Um, our, one of our agents wants to know for the lowest category of rooms. Uh, I think that's the D, E, and F rooms. Are those rooms below the waterline? <laughs> and um, do the uh, Emerald ships generally have an elevator? Elevator. There's an elevator goes to all decks except for the very very top. You can't you can't have shaft up there. Going under a bridge, probably. Uh, yeah, those cabins at the bottom are, as I mentioned, the water levels comes about halfway. It would be halfway up the wall, probably. Uh, that's why they have they have nice windows, but the windows are up high, and you know if you're not real tall, you're gonna have to get on a chair to look out. You're probably looking right at the eye of a swan or a duck or something. But uh, yeah, they're they're down there, so that's one of the reasons they're better value. Right, and my experience has been that, at worst, the window is at the water line, but I don't think anybody's window is, is underwater because the boat, you know, floats no, up. No, they're not underwater. Yeah. No, the water is down probably a couple feet below the window. Right, and I like the idea of looking out the window and being eye-to-eye with a swan. I think that would be a lovely experience. <laughs> not a um, black swan, though. Yeah, no. <laughs> Does the extra specialist bonus commission get applied automatically, or do you have to do something to receive the bonus? Well, it should be automatic. So you you would sign up, you would take the course, you would pass it, and then when you make your first booking, the, the safest thing, you know, systems work sometimes, sometimes they don't. So what I advise all my agents to do is send me an email. I like to know that you did it anyway. And so send me an email with the booking number and I'll just make sure that you get your payment. But you'll get, you'll actually get it in, uh, in probably a week, you'll get a debit card uh, for whatever the value is. Um, one of our agents says that uh, she has the 2017 uh, preview brochure, which does not have the Christmas cruises listed for 2017. Is that information available now, the Christmas 2017? Oh, yeah, cruises? it's available now. That's, that's, a, that's a good good question, thank you, because it brings up uh, how, how both Scenic and Emerald uh, work their brochures. So uh, they'll come up with a pre-brochure. And that brochure uh, that you have for 17, you should throw in the trash because it's no longer valid. Uh, because the pricing in there is what it was for 2016. So early in the year, typically January, late January, they'll come out with a brochure for the following year, uh, which would be a pre pre release brochure. We have not done anything with the pricing. We're just kind of getting out the date. Not all the itineraries are going to be in there. Uh, it's meant to be just kind of a, a preview of the next following year. And then in uh, what my experience the last uh, three years has been that in May they come out with the full brochure. And you should, should have gotten that. And that's what you should be looking at uh, and, and not the pre-release. The pre-release ex- expires as soon as the, the new one comes out because it does have the new pricing which changes every year a little bit here or there. So, uh, the answer to that question is you really should go online, emmanuelwaterways.com, go in the agent the portal and order some new brochures. And are those brochures available electronically on the website as well? Yeah, yeah. You can click on them and look at them right now on the website. 
Okay, excellent. Uh, if clients have to cancel, do, can their deposit be applied to another sailing? And if so, within what what time frame can that happen? Uh, it's possible. And again, you're going to want to work with your VDM, one of these people on the list here, and contact them right away and let them know that the client just something came up. Uh, and we can't guarantee and, and promise that, but I can promise that we're going to try it. Uh, every which way to make that happen. We want the client to sail with us. We understand things can happen. Of course, insurance helps cover any of that exposure. Uh, but a lot of people don't insure the deposits. Uh, it's not a lot of money, but uh, we'll try to transfer it if we can. Okay, excellent. Uh, can you give us an idea of Emerald's policy uh, when it comes to high or low water affecting the cruise? Very good. Uh, so, one, we have never canceled uh, a, an itinerary because we come up with alternatives for people. Um, and, and most of the problem has been like on the Danube uh, in the area before the actual Danube, you get into the Danube River, so in the Regensburg area, uh, the Danube actually comes into the, the Danube, Nuremberg Danube Canal. and uh, if there's not enough water in there, we're going to have low water. So last year was, was a pretty bad situation for everybody. Uh, in August, uh, September, and even into October, they just didn't have any snow that winter and uh, not a lot of rain all summer. So it was uh, pretty dry. So what we would have to do is just uh, people coming to Nuremberg to get on the ship. We couldn't do that because we couldn't get to Nuremberg. So we just had buses ready and we got everybody together and had a Try to make a fun ride out of it and get down, you know, maybe an hour and a half ride, two hours at most, and get on the ship that way. Sometimes, if they're going across on splendors uh, of Europe all the way across, we can uh, flip, the, flip the people from one ship to another. One's coming south, one's coming north, and we just can't quite get there together. We get that the blockage. So we'll make it work. Um, this year, this, this uh, spring, we had trouble with high water in the same area. Because there was too much snow, and then there was a tremendous rain uh, situation in southern Germany, and so you can't get under the bridges. But that's just a kind of a force of nature. Not a lot anybody can do about it. We make the most out of it. We are adding uh, for next year, and I'm happy you brought it up because I didn't mention it earlier. Uh, cruise guarantee. So if there is a situation where we have to cancel a cruise, uh, or you know, really. Uh, disturb the, the schedule to such a degree uh, because of high water, low water. It's also, you have strikes. You have strikes in France this spring uh, for the people running the bridges, running the uh, uh, locks, things like that. There are locks sometimes that break, uh, things like that, canal areas that have issues that come up. Anything like that happens uh, to a certain degree, it's all spelled out. Uh, included in the price, both Emerald and Scenic, is the cruise guarantee where we will refund all their money to them, no questions asked. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, we have time um, for. That's not meant Oops. to replace insurance, by the way. Right, we right. Still want to sell the travel insurance for medical. So. Yeah, and I sure, I'm sure our agents know that travel agent best practices is to sell insurance to everybody. In fact, you may want to quote the price already including insurance and make them opt out of insurance rather than opting in. It's a very critical thing to uh, to sell to your clients. A um, couple of more questions. Are you running any promotions where travel agents can earn a free cruise other than the tour conductor for a group? Any, any kind of travel agent promotions our agents should know about? Yeah, I, we don't have any promotions, but we do have a program where uh, if there's space available, uh, reasonable amount of space available on a sailing, we would love, and this comes from the owner and the president of the company, Mr. Maroney, uh, he would love to see you guys get on board. But we find that every time we get an agent on board, uh, they learn more about you know, I can I can try to get the picture through to you, but it's never going to be as good as you actually seeing and experience it. So uh, I encourage you to contact one of the, your local BDM uh, for the company. Say that you would like to get on a cruise. You have a certain time frame when you could do that. They can go to bat and see if there's something out there. 
if we can get a one-week cruise, the starting price for a fam trip on on, uh, on Emerald as well as Sydney is $495 for an agent. Tremendous. So these are four or $5,000 cruises that you, you're paying. That's all you're paying. Then you pay the port tax and, of course, your airfare. Uh, this would be part of it. It would be something you'd have to take care of. That certainly is a fantastic offer. Assuming that there's a lot of space available, about how far out does Emerald start allowing travel agents to get an agent rate? About four months out. Okay, that's excellent. 120. And one more question, our last question, and that is, is there a specialist program for Emerald and Scenic together, or are they two separate programs? They're separate. Okay. <laughs> Easy answer. Uh, and our time is just about up. I want to thank our speaker today, Randy Goodrich, Business Development Manager and Travel Agent Trainer for Emerald Waterways and Scenic Cruises. Randy, as always, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandy, and I appreciate everybody taking the time. Uh, feel free to use your BDM. That's what we're here for. If you have special presentations, cruise nights, anything uh, consumer or for your agents in training, uh, yeah, make sure you contact us and just try to fit that into our schedule. Thank you very much. Great advice. And my thanks, too, to all of our agents for joining us today. We appreciate you taking time out of your day for this wonderful presentation. So enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.